what is up guys all right I got home a little early so I just hooked this unit up real quick I'm gonna give it a quick test run I do have some place to be shortly so just gonna give this a one shot right now the water pump hooked up even though it's dripping a little got about 71 degree water it's probably gonna be about 70 once those uh, I just stuck these probes on so it's probably about 70 degree water out of the tap there Refrigerant pressures are equalized. Amp meter hooked up 1.8 amps for my blower. Confirm the blower blowing pretty good there. Yep. Get that right down in the airstream. Bluetooth probe. Bluetooth probe says 72.6, 72.5, 72.4. I just moved it into the air a little better. So it's probably about 71, 72 degrees out here right now. Oh, before I forget, I need to start the uh, screen capture on that. All right, are we live? We're live. Screen capture's going. Go ahead and start the sucker up, 60 hertz. Is the refrigerant pumping? We got, that must be the high and that's the low. And 527 is going up, so that must be the water outlet temperature. Water inlet is the 676 probe. 212 head pressure and rising. About 73 on the suction. It's pretty good. Pretty good suction. I have not changed the TXV. This is the TXV that was on the three ton unit going to that big three ton slab coil there. Got the blower on low speed, which is probably more than enough CFMs. Blowing pretty good actually. Uh, there's no static pressure and that's cold already. Man. Let's see uh, what we got. We have water temperature up to 97, head pressure up to 240. Not bad, not bad. Uh, supply air is already down to 54, got 20 degree, almost a 20 degree split already on that air. A little bit of, getting a lot of, speaking of air, see all that air shooting? So not only is it pissing a little bit on the pump there, but it's sucking in air there. And sometimes I have to fiddle with it just to even get this pump to prime. Yeah, yeah, but it's going to turn this a little bit so it's not restricting its flow. The water has already gone up to 80 degrees. It's heating up fast. 114 leaving. 268, 270. High side. Now, because it's a quick test, maybe I won't increase the frequency of that compressor above 60 hertz for right now. I'm running at stock speed. We'll just let it go until we do some more tests. This is just a quick test for today. 54 degree supplier. And the pressures again are 282 over 79. What am I hearing? I'm hearing the air. So we're not getting the best probably gallons per minute through this thing right now. I need to get some better fittings. And of course, my next step was if that didn't move enough water, I was going to try to get a different pump on there. I just actually found an old submergible pump on a job today, if this doesn't work. Just uh, before I do anything crazy with changing the heat exchanger again or adding the other one, I'm just gonna try to increase the water flow if this doesn't kind of hang in there. But right now we have 92 degree uh, return water and 125 degrees leaving water temperature. Definitely warm. Oops, maybe this one. Oh yeah, that's getting hot. 126, 27, yeah, you can't even hold that. That would burn you if you were taking a shower. And uh, this, like someone was saying, you know, you couldn't do instant water with something like this. If you went through a shower head, ooh, that is kind of slower than normal. Getting a lot of air on that. Um, through a shower head, it would uh, probably spray pretty good. Like that, it's pretty but I think I'm getting a lot of air in there. So this is not even a good test. 323 on the high side. But I think the high pressure was going way crazy earlier than this um, with those temperatures. And we're not getting as good of water flow as we did before because um, the fitting from moving around, I think is leaking, sucking even more air in. You could just see the air coming through, sucking it in. So that means it's less water. See, look at that, lots of air right there. So I think it's leaking. That sucks. But 
I have somewhere to be tonight. So 3.42. So I'm gonna slow this down. Um, oops, 50 hertz. Let's see, ah, come on. There's 50 hertz, see what that does to the head pressure. Head pressure is 345. Pretty level, that's pretty high. It's R22. That's pushing it hard, but I mean, I think that's acceptable. I mean, you get up to about 300 on a really hot day in an old low efficiency unit. We have 57 leaving, so we are dropping in our cooling performance. I need a little more water. But the water temperature in that five gallon bucket's already up to 110, so you're almost up to, uh, to the point where your water heater would turn off. Cause that's pretty warm. Leaving water temperature 140, yeah, you can't even hold that. So let me slow this down even more, go to 40 hertz. Oh, I must have a limit in here. It's not going down to 40. Dang it. I was not prepared for this, guys. It's slow, it's speeding up from 50. It's not going below it, though. There must be a setting in here. Yep, I got some not set right when I reset this thing. I think I was trying to get higher speeds out of it and kind of killed it. So it's at 50 hertz right now. Going a little higher than I want to on the head pressure, 370. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Give it a few seconds for the uh, pr probes to catch up with the actual temperature of the water. See, it's still going up. There's a little delay, you know, probes being clamped on the metal. Leaving water was 145, guys. That was hotter than before. And yeah, see the incoming water is one going up to a 120 still. The compressor stopped, so we already had reached um, the target tank water temperature, you know. And, and the compressor didn't get up to 400. I didn't see what it got up to. It got over 350, even down to 50 hertz. So eh. I think the compressor could do it, but. I'd have to put a probe on the hot gas line and see if it's getting over 180. Uh, or not 100, 180 is pretty normal. I mean, over 225. They say like six inches from a compressor at 225 degrees would be about 300 at the valves inside. So you don't want, so keep it under 225, six inches from the compressor. That's what they taught us in the Copeland class a while back. So I'd need to hook up some more probes or move them around. This is a quick initial test, but it heated that five gallons of water up so quick. I think we just ran this a couple minutes. Can't see uh, the counter anymore on the seven minutes of total runtime on the recorder. So five, six minutes, maybe five minutes, a little over five minutes, probably actual compressor runtime. If you heated five gallons of water up to wait, well over 120, 122 right there. Probably already cooled off a little bit being in uninsulated and open air there but way too much air in here if I can I gotta unthread that and find myself some new fittings and get these things hooked up right but it's it's got to be sucking in air right here I know I've had to fiddle with this fitting a couple times just to get it to even uh, start pumping before so I know it's sucked a lot of air there so in this thing I know the first time I hooked ooh, that was hot uh, this thing pumped more water than this you know just a lot of freaking air in there. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it back on just to, we're gonna be at 50 hertz. Well, let's see what the amps are. 6.9 amps per leg. The, t the unit's pulling in nine amps on single phase 230 for the blower and the compressor. We're now at, oh yeah, we're going way up to a, towards 400 PSI now, so I wanna stop it. Yeah. Now is at 126 uh, return water temperature at 150 leaving. <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, the next thing to do is I just need to get that gallons per minute up. That's low. I don't want to put the second heat exchanger in series with that one. I just heard the pressure switch click in there. That's not hooked up, but it's another heat exchanger right here. That's the little smaller one that's on the two-tonner. And then this one came with the larger one that's back in there. So just to recap, took the three ton, 460 volt compressor out, put in the 230 volt, two ton one in there, still three phase. Took out the 460 volt blower and put in the uh, 
230 volt blower out of the train. So it's got the bigger wheel on it, but I have it on low speed. So yeah, that water, that return water is 129. It was probably up to 130 when I stopped that. So it heated the water up to what I wanted, but the head pressure hit 400 to do it. So more gallons per minute is my next goal. Yeah, so, oh well, at least I pulled off a little operational check here, set this thing up and checked it out within about 20 minutes, not bad. Now I gotta take the VFD, put it away again. I don't want this to get rained on. So, if it rains again, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, but the sky is pretty clear right now. So, anyway, that water is freaking definitely gonna be hot. Oh yeah, that's freaking, you could not hold your finger in there more than half a second. All right, guys, I'll probably upload this later when I get a chance to edit it. But other than that, expect uh, later on the week, maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday, after work as I get a chance, I gotta just kinda see if I can get some more gallons per minute out of that pump. If not, like I said, I, I brought home a submergible pump, an old one, but it's, it, it, I plugged it in, it seemed to run. We'll see, I could drop it right in there won't have that pickup thing and then I'll and I just got to make a fitting for it to get it down to plug in the poly tube. The poly tube's a little small for what that pump is, but maybe it'll push some pretty good amount of water in there and then of course ultimately when this thing was hooked up I would have a inline, you know, circulator pump. I'd have, probably have to go buy one of those new if I seriously use this to heat up the water in the water tank. So, yeah, all right. I better cut it. Catch you guys later.